I mean, I, you, you think about uh, interoperability between like one token and another token, whether it's Ethereum and Bitcoin and how those interact. And you're seeing certain primitives where like, well, let's wrap Bitcoin on uh, in a centralized location and be able to trade that in uh, in the Ethereum DeFi network with a uh, wrap right. Bitcoin. And I, I view that as like, th that is a baby step training wheel version of that because that's centralized and it's not necessarily... Uh, that's scalable in that way. Uh, and, and there's there's two massive uh, interoperability uh, opportunities. One is in DeFi and how you align all this, uh, all these um, pieces of DeFi to, to have a unified experience. And, and that's what we're trying to do at Vesper. You know, you have uh, certain things for borrowing and, and lending and derivatives and all these uh, complexities uh, within DeFi that are all individual primitives and, and you want somebody to bring it all together. So I, I like to say that, you know, Vesper is the the, the Google for DeFi uh, and kind of the, it kind of brings it all together, uh, which is really important. Um, and then if you look at Web3, uh, that's the other, so, so DeFi and Web3. Uh, Web3 is, is the new internet, like literally, uh, full uh, TNT of the existing system, and it is a new uh, railroad that we're, we're going to be uh, interacting on going forward. Unpack what that means for people who are not uh, necessarily uh, as versed on the technical side as you are, what the implications are and what the opportunities are for Web3. So, so Web3 is, is just, uh, I would say, is, is um, the internet, the, the next internet. And the current internet, uh, for the most part, uh, we get served through Amazon for the most part. You know, we have Amazon, uh, Google Cloud, IBM, uh, Azure, and Microsoft. Uh, and and um, Amazon is is bigger than all of them by a factor of, of, I think, 3x now. And so our internet actually passes through Amazon. It's relatively centralized, uh, to, to, to put it mildly. And so uh, there's um, sensorability uh, associated with that. There's privacy associated with that. There's all these things that we kind of take for granted until things change or, or we have some uh, kind of awakening in terms of, you know, how is our data managed? Can we be shut down? All these things that we see certain things in the periphery, whether, you know, uh, some, some somebody in some country shuts down Twitter, you know, it's like, that's weird. Uh, how, how's that even possible? Uh, or um, shuts down a particular voice. And it's like, that's, that's uh, strange. Uh, and so, so a lot of these systems really uh, underpin um, privacy, security, and certain freedoms. And that's a life, liberty, pursuit of happiness level thing. And so in uh, it, right now, you know, we, we basically serve our websites and kind of interact uh, for the most part through Amazon. Going forward, um, all those layers of Amazon provides um, compute, storage, database, access, et cetera. Like the layer cake of Amazon is, is kind of all those things. And they bring it together to make it easy for companies to just get onboarded and start serving stuff on the internet. And it's, it's a really efficient, a uh, powerful model that's scaled to the moon. And they've done an incredible job of that. But going forward, in order to ensure those privacy, those security, those uh, being uncensorable, there will be, th there's a new internet that's being built today. And if you think about the anatomy of Amazon, uh, juxtaposed uh, in terms of what's happening in crypto, uh, for storage, you have Filecoin, for uh, compute, you have Gollum. For uh, uh, data, you have the graph. And so you're having a whole new stack be built, uh, you know, literally right now uh, that is going to compete with that. Uh, how that interoperates, that stack of disparate services, uh, there will be somebody that composes that. There will be like a Vesper for the composing that Web3 stack. Uh, but each layer of that is happening right now. And they're you know, uh, each of those are 10 to $20 billion uh, layers right now, kind of in the earliest days of uh, within the first year of their launch. Right. So when you think about, you know, each of those being 10 or 20 billion uh, as the starting point and kind of as they scale and, and find their groove and find better adoption and find uh, wrappers for them to be used a lot easier, 
uh, I, I think that will continue to, to have a, a, a very well grooved path for individuals that want to be on that internet, for institutions and, and companies that want to be on that kind of internet, uh, where you have better security, uncensorability, and all those things. Uh, but we're still in the early days. Like we, we are, you know, mid '90s uh, internet for this Web three. We have a lot more building to do, uh, but it's it's happening uh, probably faster than I would have anticipated at this point. You know, all those primitives of compute, storage, database, etc., are uh, more impressive than I would have imagined, and they just continue to iterate because now they have the resources too. So. All these 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 primitives that have uh, ten or twenty billion dollar market values uh, also have a billion or two or three or five in terms of treasury in order to go to market, in order to get uh, adoption, in order to hire and and the rest of it. So while they they might on one hand look inflated in terms of price, uh, they also have resources to build and invest and make a dent in the current legacy system. When and it's kind of funny to, to call Amazon Web Services a legacy system, but that's how those builders, that's how those networks think of it. Yeah, this is such a profound point. Uh, this idea that effectively what these digital assets can do uh, is move effectively in the same way that we saw Bitcoin become a kind of digital gold uh, to become a basic infrastructure uh, for the backbone of the technology that we use every day, the stack that you're talking about, uh, compute, data, and storage. These are the fundamental primitives of what makes the internet the internet. It's a really big idea to get your head around. 